I'm setting the timer for seven minutes. That's a good positional sparring round. Nothing too crazy. Chu's gonna start on top of Spider Guard. So he's gonna have to pass Cousin Tony Spider Guard, and get to the side or take the back. Cousin Tony on bottom just has to sweep or submit. You can see that they're gonna start with Cousin Tony with the sleeve grips and feet on the biceps. And Chu gets grips on Cousin Tony's pants. And so immediately Cousin Tony starts stripping <laughs> one of the spider hooks off and using that to hook Chu's leg for off balance. And then with this training, we're just going to restart as soon as anything happens. If there's a sweep or positional change from there, Cousin Tony is able to off balance again into De La Hiva from the spider guard. You guys are going to see a lot of different transitions <laughs> from Cousin Tony. Our boy Chu's not looking too good just yet, but uh, I have hope for him. You see Cousin Tony switches from spider guard to the De La Hiva. He's got De La Hiva hook and other foot on the hip. Now he's switching to a collar sleeve off balance. So you're seeing that spider guard opens itself up to a lot of different transitions. Here, Cousin Tony sweeps under. We call this like a low sweep. He was able to kick under between Chu's legs. Again, starting with the feet on the biceps, sleeve grips. Chu, is, he's trying to pummel, so that's pretty good. He, he tried to pummel for a second, but he's leaving that De La Hiva side open. And he's doing a good job of pushing the, the non-De La Hiva leg, but his hips were too close and then gets caught into like an overhead sweep situation. Takes the belt off, you know, Chu's getting serious. He tries to, uh, he's trying to step in, which is normal passing like for headquarters, but it's different when your partner has your sleeve grips. And then Cousin Tony's really quick to switch out. He's going to into a sit-up guard sweep. So here we're just seeing the difference in experience and just positional awareness. Cousin Tony has a pretty decent spider guard. He, he fights me all the time. He knows the De La Hiva's coming, so he's trying to move around a little bit. He knows the kick under's coming, so he's trying to block that, but it's hard to stop. With those good grips, the spider guard lens, you know, feet on the biceps and the strong sleeve grips, it's very hard to control yourself. You're like a puppet. And then Cousin Tony's really good at this. He's able to break his grips at will, switching to a spider lasso guard. And then Chu kind of leaves that Umapada open. <laughs> oh, triangle. And so those are, you know, two common submissions from the spider guard, Umapata and the triangle. And let's see, Chu tries to clear one of the hooks. You guys saw that. He tried to clear one of the hooks using his leg. And he's trying to pummel. I don't think he's really committing to anything too hard. Hard. Now he's coming down, he changed his levels, but Cousin Tony's able to get like his instep in and then, you know, he has Umapata or a triangle. So yeah, it can be tough when you, you're standing in Spider Guard, but then when you start going down into a combat base or both knees down, it becomes even rougher in the Spider Guard. So now Chu's doing a pretty good job. He's kind of going back, creating space. Nice. So this is really good right here, guys. He's trying to loop while stepping back and then he, he's trying to avoid, you know, some of those common submissions earlier. Up, he leaves De La Hiva open for the off balance. <laughs> <laughs> Time! <laughs> so you did really well, man. Um, I think just changing your level would help a lot. So starting in the spider guard, you're kind of up high, and that gave him a lot of space to work, right? But towards the end, you, you started getting lower, so I would have you get a good grip on the pants, and then I like to keep my elbows down, and I, I would have you bring your hips down, too. And also, I saw you trying to loop under. It, it's going to be easier to loop when you're lower. But when I'm higher, you know, kind of punched over. You can stay square. If you want to have one leg in front, that's okay too. But I have to make sure when I do that, there's not a lot of space for that De La Hiva hook to come in. Okay. Okay, so if I come down, so if he did get past my body, you know, it's kind of blocking. And I, I thought about this. I was like, you know, maybe I should show it on someone else, but Cousin Tony's so good. The skill discrepancy, the skill gap is so large that it doesn't matter if what I showed you is... <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna change his game overnight, but I just wanted to add like one or two little details. Since Chu's gonna take a little water break, I'm gonna grab my boy C and work on some spider guard passes. <laughs> on top, you wanna control the pant grips. And I like to grab all the way in front of the shin grips. I like to just pressure in with my body and have a low base. From there, I like to pummel my one hand under. So when I pummel guys, I bring my elbow close to my side. If I need to, I can use my legs to help me kind of shift the spider hook off. My biggest attack is gonna be a one leg throw. That's like the best attack from spider guard. If my partner is extending one of his legs to where it's hard for me to, you know, re-pummel, 
I'm gonna step towards that leg he has extended and use my shin to help me break that grip and then re-pummel and then I can throw to the other side. Another pass that I like to do, I like to go backwards and then I can clear both legs and then step in for like a leg drag type guard pass. Some other passing that I like to do, using my shin, like I showed earlier, walking to the side of my partner's body, use my shin to help me clear. And I can actually use both legs, you know, either the inside leg or the outside leg. I can also step, you know, especially if the guy has a really good guard, I can step using either leg really to help me break the, the spider grip. I can also step in onto my partner's thigh, like outside his thigh, and that will create a lot of pressure to help me get a good throw on the other side. Something I'm realizing is with your spider guard passes is that it's got to be explosive. It's like pressure, and then you have to know when to release that pressure and create more space, more distance. So now that Chu's had some time off, he's had a little break, he's gotten some water, collected himself, put himself back together for us. Let's see how much he's improved. So again, we're, we're going to have Chu start on top in Cousin Tony's spider guard. Chu is going to try to pass the guard and then cousin tony's gonna try to sweep or submit they're gonna go for five minutes guys nothing too crazy so he's starting lower and he's using his arms to kind of frame cousin tony's feet so man he's already improved by leaps and bounds now blocking de la Hiva and just giving a little bit more movement better better uh situational awareness he's actually fighting the the uh feet on the spider the spider hooks and now if he would just start to pummel i think that would be he's pummeling nice and he needs to watch out for that elbow space on his cousin tony's right leg you see how that kind of snuck through i would try to block that a little bit better but yeah umaplata city maybe triangle he's doing he's holding on to the pants so cousin tony's probably going to go umaplata but I, overall i would say that was even a it was a better round just from watching that she's coming down not much he can do from here <laughs> So again, just starting, Chu's got a good base, he's low. And if you could put a little bit more pressure on Cousin Tony and frame the legs so it's harder there. See how it's harder for Cousin Tony to re-pummel. He's switching to a collar sleeve guard. And then Chu's doing, man, this is the best round Chu's done so far. He's blocking that De La Hiva. He, he just has to be more aware of that collar sleeve you know, when the foot's past his elbow. But he, overall, he's doing really well. If he could throw in like a Toriando, maybe a throw by, that would be some really good options. And then Chu kind of sweeps himself by going down. I mean, of course, you want to be able to defend yourself in these guards, but you also need to be be able to attack. You know, attack with your passing. So if Chu could, you know, he's got a, he's doing really well there. But if he could throw into like a Toriando, that would be really good. If he could use his shins to kind of help frame frame Cousin Tony's legs and use that to break. But overall, he's giving more resistance. He's doing better. He, he's a little bit more aware of the position, so he needs to stay on top. That's some feedback for him. Stay on top and uh, don't be afraid to pass. Uh, Bolo City. So even though Chu isn't throwing together too many uh, you know, guard passing attempts, he's able to defend a lot longer than before. Now he's a little bit more aware of that collar sleeve transition. If he was able to keep his elbow a little bit more tighter, you know, man, that would add on a lot more dimensions. A little bit more pressure from Chu would be great here. And then, man, Toriando, whenever he sees an opening or a throw by, if he could work his shin, his left shin inside, he's doing his right shin now, that's fine. But he needs to loop that arm. He needs to loop his left arm. Keep going, Chu, but not leave. You gotta loop the left arm without leaving that De La Hiva. So I would like to see him be a little bit more persistent, especially with the looping. Man, trying to throw that leg by. Umaplata again. It's not hard, right? Sure. Oh, thank you. I felt a lot better. So it felt a little, little, little bit better? I couldn't. I was trying to swim. I don't know if I I mean, that's going to happen. That's going to happen, especially this guy had good grips. What I was saying, I think you had cleared one side. Here. Yeah. So even if you can't get this through, uh, just keeping it here because it's kind of blocks. It's the more he goes to pull, and you really got to get your elbow in. And then when, once you start clearing, uh, the next step, you know, you can start creating space and distance. So you know, if I can get one before he switches to the collar. And now this puts him in a bad position. He, he has to let go to grab the collar. That's, I think that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. But in that transition, go back to the tiny. In that transition, you can open. I see. Okay. So there's a point where you need to be tight, and then another point where you need to create space. So uh, that takes some time to get kind of under your belt. But he, he did better. Yeah. <laughs> he did a lot better. Just that one little adjustment.
Hope you guys were able to learn something from this spider guard passing tutorial. So we mostly focused on looping, looping the lasso and then throwing either to the side or getting to the leg drag. There's definitely more passes, guys. These are just some of the ones that I really like to utilize. What I want you guys to take away from this video is that you can use this style of learning, this methodology of training to work on your passes for other guards, like, you know, passing De La Hiva, you know, collar sleeve and other guards, like half guard. You know, as far as developing your guard, that works the same way. You figure out what the guard passer is trying to do on top. And then when you're on bottom, you try to do Guys, the opposite. Also, right? just realize your instructor doesn't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers, even though I act like it. A lot of jujitsu is going to be self-learning, especially once you you're past blue belt going into purple belt, you're gonna have to start doing more specific sparring, more studying to improve. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, you like this style of video, let me know in the comment section and please check out my next video on BJ Footwork.